Hello, I'm Michal Ischiulas, uh, I'm an architect. Uh, I've studied architecture at the National Technical University of Athens. Uh, I have graduated from the postgraduate program of protection of monuments at the same university. And I'm actually now conducting my PhD in industrial heritage, also in National Technical University of Athens. And I'm a lecturer at Neapolis University of Paphos. Uh, I'm presenting this paper on behalf also of uh, Dr. Ioannis Pisurios. The cultural heritage has, in that last decade, closely linked to the concept of sustainable development. A number of studies have demonstrated the economic benefits that can accrue from the cultural heritage and the important role it can play in the revival of urban areas. More specifically, it can contribute significantly to the attractiveness of urban space for visitors and investors, reinforce the characteristic identity of a location, and improve the standard of living of the inhabitants. Today, many cities use their cultural heritage as an essential urban development strategy, while international organizations such as the United Nations emphasize the need for a more effective utilization of the cultural heritage on all levels of development policies and practices. In this context, our article focuses on the presentation of the Integrated Urban Development Plan prepared for the historic town center of Paphos, Paphos is a touristic uh, coastal town of Cyprus whose history dates back to the Neolithic period. Um, the main object, objective of the plan, which was prepared under the National Strategic Reference Framework, is the revitalization of the historic town center and the strengthening of its sustainable development by implementing actions organized in three groups. Protection and promotion of cultural heritage, enhancement of the competitiveness of small and medium-sized enterprises and promotion of employment and alleviation of social exclusion. Our proposal in presenting this case study is twofold. On the one hand, the article aims at identifying the methodological peculiarities of the, of the integrated urban development plan, something which allows for a better understanding of the complex nature of such plans. In this direction, the paper also presents and discusses the initiatives undertaken by the participants to allow the plan to confront these peculiarities and attain the best possible outcome. On the other hand, the article presents the proposed actions which, though focused on the protection and promotion of the cultural heritage of the historic South Town Center of Paphos, ultimately form a comprehensive scheme that enhance the economy and the social life of this part of the city. The preparation of an integrated urban development plan exhibits interesting peculiarities compared to other kinds of plans, such as local plans and area schemes prepared by the Department of Town Planning and Housing. Since it covers a broader thematic context, it includes both spatial and non-spatial goals, while the study area of the plan is not predefined. More specifically, the Department of Town Planning and Housing performed an initial delimitation of the wider area, indicating the historic town centers as the most appropriate areas for the preparation of the plan. However, within this broad area, the municipality concerned had flexibility in specifying the final study area, a decision that required a well-structured agenda of priorities. Moreover, the preparation of such a plan for a secret town generally, and for Paphos in particular, comprises an even greater challenge, such as, such as different development rights are attributed by legislation to Greek Cypriot and Turkish Cypriot properties, and thus in 2017 Paphos will be the European capital of culture for which certain cultural and other actions have been planned. Because of these peculiarities, the planning team was led to take a series of crucial methodological decisions. First, the team chose to collect and analyze a wide spectrum of data in order to arrive at the final delimitation of the area of intervention. Secondly, in order to be able to include actions that address the most important deficiencies of the area, the planning team chose to distribute questionnaires. 
Thirdly, because of the multiplicity of agencies involved, the planning team foresaw the coexistence of different priorities of intervention. In order to address this probability, while working on the plan, organized a series of intermediate presentations and meetings with the participation of invited stakeholders. The above decisions are closely related to crucial points of urban planning theory, which are not be followed in a satisfactory way in simple planning system. As mentioned above, during the preparation of the Integrated Urban Development Plan, the planning team collected a wide spectrum of data in order to define the precise area of intervention. <coughs> the analysis of the existing situation was based on the inventory of the following. Large, free open spaces in the area, land users at street level, the functional condition of the buildings, the age of the buildings, legally protected buildings, listed buildings, and buildings and streetscapes showing notable morphology, parking spaces, and finally, bus connections of the area for the area noting routes and bus stops. The above analysis allowed the planning team to outline the spatial structure, structure of the selectable study area which is reflected in the de definition of the four sub-areas, each one of which has certain specific characteristics. The area of the historic center par excellence, which includes <laughs> the traditional commercial center of Paphos and is the only purely commercial area of the city. The area of the neoclassical buildings, which is marked by a strong concentration of buildings from <laughs> neoclassical style. The Mutalos area, which borders the historic center par excellence and is a natural extension of it, both functionally and in terms of architectural morphology. And the remaining central urban area defined as the wider urban area center. For each of the above areas, a SWOT analysis was prepared, the results of which show that the three first areas show strong cohesion both which other and in terms of the potential interventions of this type of plan. For this reason, these three areas comprise the study area of the integrated urban development plan. As mentioned above, the plan foresees three thematic distinct actions. Taken together, the actions aid the revitalization of the wider historic city center, its economic development and its social progress and well-being, while contributing directly or indirectly to the protection and promotion of its cultural heritage, though such a perspective is not clearly stated in the plan. Among, among the goals of uh, the first action, protection and promotion of cultural heritage, emphasis is placed on the multidimensional role of the cultural heritage and the benefits that can occur from its protection and display. Reference is made to the role of cultural heritage as a powerful factor for balanced growth, with mention, among other things, of the social and economic development of the city, though uh, through increased employment and the, and the strengthening of social cohesion. In the above action, the cultural heritage is limited to the material remains of the historic cultural context of the location, with no reference to possible ways of protecting and promoting its non-material aspects. In this context, the project proposed concern the restoration and review and reuse of four modern historic buildings and the renovation of three urban units in the city centre. The four buildings are the Central Market, the historic camp of Ibrahim, uh, the historic cinema theatre at Icon, and the Makedio Theatre. For urban renovation, the planning team selected the Commercial Center and Kennedy Square, the most centrally located square of the city, the urban unit defined by the Town Hall, the Historic Schools of Paphos, the Public Garden, the Metropolis and Ethnographic Museum, and the badly degraded Turkish Cypriot neighborhood of Mutalos. The plan proposes the transformation of the historic town of Ibrahim into a model hub for traditional crafts, innovation and cultural activities. And the Cinema Theatre Attico into a cultural multiplex and conference center. The stage of the Marquita Theatre will be modernized and upgraded to offer infrastructure for conference tourism. 
For the central market, the proposal suggests interventions for modernization and viable functioning. For the commercial center and Kennedy Square, the plan proposed radical changes in the spatial structure with traffic regulations, pedestrian streets, and the creation of parking spaces. In the urban unit around the town hall, the plan proposed extensive pedestrian pedestrianization and other urban innovations to make the renovated area a landmark of the city with the capacity to host a wide variety of cultural and social activities. Finally, for the Turkish Cypriot neighborhood of Mutalos, which is inhabited mainly by Greek Cypriot refugees, the plan proposed an extensive re reconfiguration of public space, redesign of the central square and renovation of facades to counteract the social and economic isolation of the neighborhood. The choice of the above buildings and locations as spaces for innovation and the proposed new uses for them accords with the long-standing demands of the local community without the plans that the municipality had not been able to realize in the past and with measures identified as necessary for the city to function as cultural capital of Europe in 2017. Given the scale of the historic center, these projects, which are already being realized, Taken together, constitute a dynamic innovation in the structure and function of the city centre. In addition to the protection of the buildings and locations concerned, the completion of these projects is expected to bring about a large-scale revitalization of the image of the city, encouraging new activities and kick-starting private initiatives, creating jobs and economic development. The restoration and reuse of the building stock of the area the availability of new infrastructure and social services in the renovated areas and the creation of new uses of a public character can be the catalyst for a reversal of the continuous decline of the historic center. The second action, enhancement of the competitiveness of small and medium-sized enterprises, specifies two general goals, access to services and improvement of the quality of life for the inhabitants and development of human resources. For the accomplishment of these general goals, the program sets two specific aims, tourism and culture, and development and employment in the digital economy. In order to strengthen the tourist industry in the city centre, the plan focuses on alternative forms of tourism, specifically cultural, religious, therapeutic and conference tourism, and in order to encourage the growth of entrepreneurship, the plan gives special importance to digital technology. By encouraging the development of these forms of tourism and the development of entrepreneurship, the plan aims once again for the revival of the historic center. In this context, although this is not explicitly stated, the plan also indirectly supports the goals of the first action. The last action, promotion of employment and alleviation of social exclusion, focuses on vulnerable social groups, immigrants, the disabled, drug addicts, etc. The goals of the action is to further their social inclusion and their social cohesion of the city. To achieve this goal, the action proposed specific artistic measures for each of the above categories of inhabitants, however, without immediately realizable projects. For example, for immigrants, the planning team proposed the creation of reception services, Greek language, Greek language classes, measures for raising awareness among the public, etc. The inclusion of this action in the plan is particularly important because the long decline of the historic city center has caused a massive accumulation of individuals belonging to these vulnerable social groups. Without the measures forcing this action, it's likely that the first two actions proposed for the revitalization of the wider historic center uh, will lead to an increase of their problems. In terms of development as well, the inclusion of these groups in the community of the city can encourage private initiative and indirectly, if appropriate direction and control is exercised by the government of the municipality, provide further support for the protection and promotion of the cultural heritage. The plan also includes three more actions which classified as complementary because they had to do with projects which are not located inside the reservation area and because they could not be included in the National Strategic <coughs> Reference Framework. The first action is the unification of the archaeological sites at Catopathos. The second action is the upgrading of the central city bus terminal. And the third action is the remodeling of the archaeological museum. It is clearly that the Overall innovation includes action which cover an unusually wide range of planning sectors. These characteristics of the plan 
further complicates the already difficult process of monitoring the outcomes of a spatial planning intervention. The difficulty of monitoring outcome is due to the nature of the outcomes, which are not always tangible or measurable. The nature of the actions which aim at producing benefits which may not be immediately apparent, but will accrue over time and the multiplicity and high degree of complementarity of the actions which make it difficult to distinguish what particular action led to or contributed to which particular result. The need to monitor the outcomes of the plan developed at the instigation of the Department of Town Planning and Housing, which was the agency responsible for the evaluation of the integrated urban development plan, rose up for the larger cities of Cyprus. In the same spirit, the department proposed the systematic use of indices to subsidize the need for its action. The Integrated Urban Development uh, Plan of Paphos Municipality is a multi-dimensional plan whose central axis, however, remains the protection and promotion of the cultural heritage. The proposed protection and promotion, the proposed interventions that affected uh, the cultural heritage are clearly defined and cover a variety of states of the urban environment from restoration of buildings and building complexes to interventions in open free spaces of historic interest and linear, and linear uh, renovations. The new uses proposed for historic buildings provide for the installation of service covering a wide variety of activities related to culture, tourism, leisure and local commerce along the historic center to regain its multifunctional and nodal role in the life of the city. In addition, this plan appears to constitute a special case of planning innovation diverging in several aspects from current civil planning practice. As is clear from the presentation above, these divergences can be identified both in the extension of the analytical stage and in the strengthening of the participatory process. Thank you very much.